City. <laughs> All right now, huh? Yeah, amazing, amazing game. Wow, like a roller coaster. Yeah. Now we're joined by Chief Soccer Officer and Sporting Director Chris Henderson. We'll get started with the press conference now. Yeah, it's great to talk to you guys again. Um, you know, recapping, uh, looking back a year ago when we were sitting here uh, with what we had in front of us, um, we decided to go for it with the roster. Um, you know, I think through the year we had uh, 18 players come in, uh, 15 players go out. Um, uh, uh, I'm really happy that um, Phil is uh, continuing with us uh, because we've we've uh, worked every day tirelessly, tirelessly on the DNA of the club, the culture of the club, uh, putting the foundations in place uh, for long term uh, success. Uh, I, I feel like we took some really good steps this year. Um, was it uh, a complete success this season? Disappointing to lose first round of the playoffs, uh, but I felt the progress was what we wanted. Um, we are an ambitious club. Um, the support from from Jorge and Jose Moss and David Beckham, uh, they have been together with us since day one. Um, but we want to win here and we want to, we want to compete for championships. And I think, uh, we're a club that, um, it's about the people that we bring in, including players, uh, staff, uh, and everyone working together in the building. And, and, um, what drives me and, and gets me up in the morning is that we set high goals and we want to accomplish, uh, uh, and have a successful run as a team, but it's what we are becoming as a club to achieve those successes. And that's what, what really makes me proud is we're heading in the right direction. We will get started with questions. If you have one, please raise your hand. We'll get started with Michelle, then Jose. Well, I have multiple, but I'll start with one. Um, was there any consideration to go more than one year with Phil or was it a, just a let's see what happens next year kind of situation? You know what? Because I know long-term, long-term, a lot of talk about long-term, but one year is not long-term. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into the details of of Bill's contract, um, but I what I do want to talk about is is what we have been able to do together and where we're going and um, continuing to build the um, camaraderie collaboration that we have between our players and staff. Uh, you know, when I look back at, at my years in this league, I haven't had uh, in a really long time the collaboration between front office and coaching staff that I've had at this club. Uh, the work together, um, you know, just living the values of the club every single day. Um, so, so I think if we, uh, the support from ownership is always there. That if we are successful, um, then we will continue to build this club, and uh, the group will continue to stay together. Go to Jose and Franco. Um, Chris, my question is about DPs. Um, do you expect to have all three DPs by the start of preseason? And um, is Rodolfo Pizarro going to be part of this team for next year? Yeah, so I'll start with the second question. Uh, uh, we're in conversations with uh, uh, Pizarro and his agent and Monterey, where he has been on loan and he has counted as a DP for us this this year. Um, so those conversations are ongoing. They're, um, you know, there could be a, a knock-on effect on DP. So we're, we're, we're trying to take it step by step um, and, and uh, then be able to make the next move. You know, we, we get linked with big names. We want to bring in characters and personalities that fit what we're building and will come in and fit the core players that we're continuing to go forward with. So the work is going on um, and research is going on and conversations are going on every day. Next question, Franco. Chris, uh, piggybacking off of that, um, obviously South Florida, like you said, especially Miami and Inter Miami is linked with big names all the time. It's a city that likes its star power. Obviously we see all the people that come to the games on a regular basis, the celebrities. Um, it's always a talking point. How important is it to have someone that obviously can be part of the project long-term and they can be productive on the field, but how important is the big name in the whole equation? Is that something that you guys value really highly or are you more important? Are you more uh, stressing someone that's going to come in and perform for 
however many seasons that you sign them for? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and it's one that that happens uh, with teams all over our league. Um, I think uh, for us, it's about finding, as I said, the right character who's going to fit uh, the values and where we want to go as a club, uh, be able to impact the team um, in how we play. Um, DPs should, if it's an attacking player, he should be able to uh, add assists and goals and create chances. Um, so I think uh, those are things we look at, how they're going to fit within our team, how we predict the way we're going to play um, and build our team around that player. Um, and at the same time, we want a player who's going to connect with our with our community. Our fans are amazing. And uh, I wanted to say at the beginning, uh, we we were really proud of our fitness this year. And I look at our fans coming out in 80, 90 degree weather for 90 plus minutes uh, backing our team. Um, we have the best fans in the league. I mean, that is just uh, impressive that they were behind us. And I think we want players who are going to come in and fit in and be part of this community and be players that the community is proud of. We'll go to Andrea. Hi, Chris. I wanted to ask you two quick ones. Can you talk a little bit about Leonardo Campana and you guys deciding to go for him and bringing him back as a young designated player, as it's rumored to be? And second, can you talk a little bit about Emerson, the likes of Emerson Rodriguez and uh, uh, um, Edison Ascona, who are coming back, but are young players that didn't get a lot of playing time this year? Are you looking to to place them um, and on, on our teams, on USL, or maybe uh, on loan to other countries? Thank you. Leo Campana had a great year for us. When a forward uh, comes in his first year and gets double-digit goals, that's everything you ask for. And we really feel like he's going to take another step next year. Um, we're happy to you know, take the option. We're working on the details uh, with Wolves right now uh, to finalize that. But um, yeah, Leo has been fantastic for us. He fits in different formations. He's hardworking. He's a young player. Um, who really plays uh, the uh, above his age, uh, what he adds to the team. And he has got great confidence. We, uh, you know, we, we are cheering for him uh, to make the World Cup team for Ecuador. Uh, I think he could add a great amount up top for them in the World Cup. So fingers crossed for him. Um, he looked fit and ready when he left here. Um, and then the other players, the, the young players, Edison, um, Emerson, uh, have been great prospects for us every day at training they come out and they're they're uh, trying to improve trying to break into the lineup um edison will go on a training stint um uh with robbie at real zaragoza our partner club and um uh, and emerson is excited to come back um he's one of those players uh who, who goes at players one-on-one -on -one ability taking players on can change a game for you um, so as as these players come in and mature, we'll continue to put extra um, uh, emphasis on them on and off the field. We'll take some questions from the call. Felipe Cardenas of The Athletic first and Paul Gilmore from Sky Sports. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Actually, good afternoon. Two questions for you. The first one, uh, The Athletic reported last week that the, uh, Inter Miami were increasingly confident in signing Lionel Messi eventually. Can Can you comment? On that, on any on any, any talks between the club and Lionel Messi, and then, you know, you're talking about the, the the roster, but what are some areas, key areas that you're focusing on for next season that you think are priorities in order to to get this club just one step above? Thanks, Felipe. Um, yeah, I mean, I knew uh, Messi would come up. It's great to be connected with, uh, you know, amazing players, and and our club connected with that. Um, I, you know, I don't want to comment on someone who's not on our roster and, you know, or speculation and rumors, um, but obviously he's, you know, one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Um, uh, as far as, uh, you know, the roster and what we're looking to improve for going uh, for next year, I think continuing to look for players who are good in possession under pressure in the final third. Uh, we want to be a team that dictates the pace of the game. Um, we have made really great strides this year with our performance department and uh, heat strategies. And I think that's been really successful. And if you look at how many times we came back from losing positions to win, tie or win games, um, I think that goes into how we prepare, um, how we uh, have made Drive Pink a fortress here. Um, so, so 
definitely bringing players who can help us in possession. Uh, we can improve in attacking set pieces. That's going to be a focus for next year. Um, you know, I think uh, we were one of the top teams in defending set pieces, um, but also on the road. How do we play on the road? How do we get results on the road? I think our re results at home spoke for themselves, but we need to improve uh, on the road if we want to be uh, in, a, in a position to get a home playoff game at the end of the season. Thank you. We'll go to Paul Gilmore. Thanks very much. Hi, Chris. Hope you're well. Uh, Chris, uh, just to follow up on Messi, really, um, I, I, I read recently that one of your young goalkeepers got a tattoo of Messi's signature on his arm. I just wondered, you know, I appreciate you don't want to go into details, but is the, that's the kind of excitement that Messi generates amongst, <laughs> never mind fans, but players and the thought of being a potential teammate of Messi. But I just wondered if you had any thoughts on what that would mean for the club in terms of profile and also how delicate a balance is it between signing you know players at the end of their careers but also you know combining that with players in their prime thank you yeah paul good question i think the uh you know messi on any team in the world is going to to change that team so uh i i do think um as i said i don't want to i don't want to speculate and and talk about you know him on our team but he um yeah, he changes changes every league, every team that he plays for. But I can talk to uh, how a player coming in can change change our team, and as we look for difference makers, um, I, I think it comes down for me in in the uh, in in MLS and having DPS come in. What is the character of the player? What's his motivation to come to the league? Um, as you said, the balance between older players in this league and younger players. It comes down to. Uh, that motivation, the fitness level of the player, why he's coming, and then being able to integrate him into what you're doing as a club and where you're going. Um, if all of those pieces fit together, you've seen the, the successful DPs that have played in our league and won championships. And that's what we're looking for. We want to maximize that, uh, any addition we have to our team to help us be successful and achieve our goals. We're going to go to Thanks, Chris. Kaufman. Okay, I'll ask a two-part question now since I have the mic. Um, I want to ask you about um, Pozuelo. What is the situation with him? He's out of contract. And um, Pozuelo and Pizarro, you know, kind of similar sort of positions. Would would it be one or the other? Would both of them potentially play? And, uh, and then um, sort of what Jose had asked before, and all this talk about Messi and whatever, um, if you go into the season with three DP spots filled, then there is no DP spot for a messy type signing in the summer. Or do you think you're going to go into the season with two DPs right now? You have Bisato, right? That's the only DP spot you have filled. So what is the plan for DPs going into the start of the season and Pozuelo? Thank you. Yeah, I'll start with um, the DP spots. I think, uh, you know, there could very well be a young DP in Campana um, occupying a spot. Um, um, Pasuelo uh, came in the middle of the summer for us um, and added that spark we needed, uh, creativity, final pass, um, uh, boosted Iguain. If you look at if you look at what you want from a DP, the, the last 16 games, Gonzalo Iguain fit that. He won games for us. Um, and I think the combination of Pasuelo and, and Iguain were, was was one of the best combos in the league. So we're we're really happy with what he brought in. We're having conversations with him and his agent as well. Um, but there is a lot of lot of things in the air with DP that that uh, we have to wait on that decision. Um, Pizarro is another player who's who's occupied the DP spot for us. Um, we're having conversations with with him and with Monterey, um, and to see if you know what the situation is for him. Um, he has done well. We followed him at Monterey. Um, was in and out with the Mexican national team at times. Um, but all of these players that I, I mentioned are, are players who can change our team. And that's what we're looking, we're looking for, players who can come in and make the difference and, and, and control the rhythm of the game, help us in possession, help us create uh, goals um, and, and be a balance of the team and lead the team. Um, so those are the things the the recruitment staff with Nikki, Sam, Mark, Megan, uh, and all the coaching staff working together to find the best pieces. For the timetable, when would you like to have guys in? What month? 
Yeah, I mean, I think some of that is is in the air. We, roster compliance. <laughs> we need to have everything done by. So, um, I, I think the question for for the summer DP that's an option too. So waiting, waiting to add a DP into the summer. Sometimes that window uh, presents more options for us than the January window. Um, but but in MLS, we're fortunate. We have until May where the primary window stays open. So. Um, you know, there's different ways of looking at it where you look and see how your team is doing in preseason, uh, being able to make changes or additions, how you start the season, uh, and then having that bump in the summer where you run into the playoffs and really add someone who can change your team, as we did with Pesuela this summer. We're going to go to Mauricio Venegas from Inter Miami and then Ian Hest. Hi, good afternoon, Chris. I wanted to ask you about uh, the youth the youth development and the progress that, that happened this year, you know, even from the from the academy, sorry, from academy levels, there were lots of clubs. Even the the U15 team was crowned as national champions. And then now, uh, talking about the first team, uh, two Inter Miami CF2 products were called and uh, earned first team contracts. And then uh, an academy player as Noah Allen also earned a contract with the first team. After such a highly successful 2022, uh, what's next for the for the club in terms of, uh, of youth development, as it's one of the pillars of the organization. Hi, Maurizio. Um, yeah, we're really proud of of uh, what we're building in the academy uh, going through our second team. Uh, Craig Dalrymple's done a really good job setting the foundation for our academy. Uh, winning the uh, MLS Next uh, at U15 was huge. Uh, national champions, um, you know, Victor Pastora and his work there. Um, Javi Morales is there. Uh, we have uh, amazing coaches in our academy that are that are going to be um, moving around to different positions within our club to help us improve the the quality uh, of the players and the pathway for the players coming into the first team. Uh, Darren Powell and Federico Iguain lead our second team. Um, you know, we're really proud of uh, some of the uh, players that we've signed to the first team. You mentioned Noah Allen. Uh, ben Hakramashi is another player who's done well and was at the MLS Next All-Star Game. Uh, but there's there's a lot of players coming through the system, and we want to make sure that we are uh, developing those in the right way. Uh, Phil is really good at uh, working with young players and having young young players train with the first team every day. Uh, so I think that development is something uh, ownership is uh, really focused on. And you look at the talent in South Florida and there's so many young players coming through and we want to give an opportunity at Inter-Miami. Uh, we're going to go to Ian and, and finish it with Jose. Thank you, Rafa. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Um, I, this will be Next year will be the second year of the sanctions that you'll have to deal with. What did you learn from this year in dealing with them that could help you for next year and also with St. Louis's expansion on the horizon? How do you prioritize who you want to protect throughout that process? Yeah, we have one more year, and uh, I, I think we take it like we did last year. Uh, this is what we have to work with and and make the most of it and move forward. Um, I, and it's uh, it doesn't do any good for us to to dwell on on having less money, but it's uh, you know we we want to build and we want to be able to try and compete with what we have. And I, I think we took great steps last year, and we want to continue to move forward. Um, uh, the second question, Ian. With St. Louis's expansion coming, and you have to prioritize certain players to protect. Yeah, I mean these are always difficult decisions for um, for clubs. Uh, who do you protect? They they can take five players throughout the league. Um, we hope we don't lose anyone because we love our core group. Um, but they're tough decisions, and and you have to you have to figure out um, you know which twelve you're going to protect. Uh, and not just on not just on the roster of who's playing, but also looking at contracts and where we're at. Um, so we will finalize that in the in the coming uh, days, um, and then we'll see how it plays out. There's there's um, conversations that are happening with St. Louis already uh, with our club. Um, so we'll we'll know in a couple of days how it, how it plays out. Last question, Jose. Thank you. Um, Chris, with the World Cup coming up, um, is there anybody from Inter Miami that will travel? How do you scout if you do it at all, that tournament, um, looking for players? And how can that hold up to negotiations with players that you might already have on your list? 
Yeah, good question. Um, everybody wants to go watch a World Cup. Um, sometimes when you're when you're uh, at the World Cup, it's not as easy to get around. Uh, you can see more uh, with video scouting. Uh, we will have uh, some of our scouts there um, that will be working. Uh, we have had conversations with with different players. Uh, we will have our own players in the World Cup. We feel uh, with the possibility of DeAndre Yedlin and. Uh, and Campana, hopefully making the, their World Cup teams. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, as we focus on on DP players and, and uh, narrow down our lists, um, we'll definitely put time into how they play the World Cup. And and uh, the, the challenge with international soccer is how they will fit into our team and, and uh, in Major League Soccer. So those those interviews and conversations will have to happen as we get closer to signing players. Thank you, Chris. That concludes Chris Anderson's Thanks. press conference.